Hello, welcome to the latest Edinburgh Fortune Society online meeting. My name is Gordon Rutter and I organise these meetings. We normally meet in real life, but because of current circumstances, we're using YouTube as our venue of choice, if you like. We're still keeping to the same timetable that we would in real life, which is uh, the second Tuesday of every month at 7.30pm. We've got a range of talks that are already up on the, uh, on the website here, and we've got many more that are coming. So thank you for everyone who's spoken previously. Thank you for all those who are planning on speaking in the near future as well. When we do go back to real life meetings, we will be using all of the communication methods listed below to uh, alert everyone of the fact and we'll also say it on our videos as well. Recently we've been using the videos as an option to use speakers that we wouldn't normally get because of geographical distance and we've had a few speakers from the states for example well for this talk we've got somebody not quite from as far as the states we've got steve jones a, a lifelong fortune who's based in wakefield wakefield's almost the states near enough let's be honest steve's going to be talking to us uh, on tales from the haunted bathrooms as he says tales from the haunted bathrooms. Toilets and bathrooms are among the most haunted places in buildings. Steve will tell tales of the dead man in the gents, the phantom groper of Wakefield, Steve's strange experience in Newark and other tales that may make you in need of a bathroom yourself. Some of you will know Steve already but for those of you who don't, Steve founded and still runs the Wakefield Pagan Moot. He organises the West Yorkshire Pagan Meetup. He's the West Yorkshire representative for the CFZ and from 1998 to 2019 was the UK's only openly pagan magistrate. Steve's interests include folklore, Fortiana, paganism and the paranormal. He's appeared on local and national TV and spoken at several Fortune events. And tonight he's going to be speaking to the Edinburgh Fortune Society. So, for Steve's take on Fortune Toilets, here he is. Thank you very much. This talk is predominantly, although it's entitled Haunted Toilets and Bathrooms, um, because it's involving either bathrooms and toilets I've actually been in, um, or I'm aware of, then you will find it will actually be about gents' toilets, as I'm not in the habit of hanging around in ladies' toilets. Although I should point out for the benefit of any female listeners, that in actual fact, um, from the tales that I've uh, been told or know about, um, the chances of being in a haunted ladies' toilet are actually uh, substantially more than in a haunted gents' toilet. For some reason, there seems to be quite a lot of hauntings in ladies' toilets. Um, it will become apparent as we go through this talk as well that some gents' toilets are also haunted by females. Uh, so don't assume that everywhere is just going to be haunted by one particular sex. Um, this talk will involve me telling you how I got interested in it and some cases in which I've personally been involved um, or become aware of. So if we can have the next slide please. This is the former Jacob's Well Tavern pub uh, in Wakefield. Um, as you can see from the, sl from the slide it's where it's boarded up, um, the pub is no longer there now. In fact it's part of a Sainsbury's car park. This was the first time I actually came across uh, a toilet ghost myself. The pub was an old drover's pub uh, built around the 1840s, um, opposite a holy well, hence the Jacob's Well, which is interesting in itself. Now, as you can, some of you who know this picture can probably tell by looking at it, it was the old-fashioned type of pub with little snug separate uh, things and a bar sort of horseshoe shape that had been put in the middle. In order to get to the gents, uh, it was slightly strange. You had to go around the back of the bar on a corridor. The gents were halfway around. Now, the quirky thing with Jacob's Well gents' toilets were that as the door opened inwards and the urinals were to the right of the door, anybody who was actually standing at the urinal that was immediately closest to the door was exposed to anybody walking down that corridor. Um, and as the ladies were further down, then both sexes would be able to see who was there. 
So unless you were actually an exhibitionist or a flasher, it usually was unoccupied. Um, and obviously, whenever people went in, one tended to use the ones a bit farther along. I was in there one night because it was the pub we were using for my wait for pagan moot at the time. Uh, and as usual, I was standing um, away from the near, urinal nearest the door, uh, doing what one has to do, when there was a distinct <clears throat> at my right shoulder, which is where the urinal closest to the door was. I stopped and looked out because I thought it might have been somebody from the moot having a laugh. Um, but in the short time it had taken me to do that, it would have taken them um, more time. Yeah, I heard the, <clears throat> the cough, turned to my right, nobody there, and I hadn't heard the door open, um, but I saw what I was doing, zipped up, went out fast, um, because I thought it might have been somebody from the moot um, having a laugh. However, in the short period of time it took me to do that, there was no way that anybody could have made it to the end of the corridor and then turned to go back into the bar. Um, I checked both ways. So... As I say, that was the first time something strange actually happened to me in a gent's toilets. Um, the pub itself had various other ghosts. Um, nobody had actually reported anything in the gent's toilet. Uh, and on inquiring of the landlord at the time, he was not actually aware of anybody else having a similar experience in the gents. Uh, although there were other ghosts that haunted the place um, whilst the time was there. Right, if we can have the next slide. Right, my next experience of a toilet ghost um, took place in Newark. Now, in 2004, I decided to have a day out down in Newark. I was, ironically enough, um, looking around at haunted spots in Newark um, because I got some books by a local ghost hunter um, whose name escapes me, um, who'd actually written some excellent books on the hauntings of Newark. So I'd gone down um, for the day. I'd gone in various places, just idly, seeing if there was anything there, not seeing anything. Um, and I'm including the local museum, um, which wasn't up to scratch at the time. Now, the people in there told me that there was a folk museum, um, which at that time had not been open that long. Um, and this is the folk museum. It's based in an old mill, as can be seen. It's the one Mark Trent Navigation uh, Wharf and Warehouse. And it's been partly turned into a folk museum, um, which is an excellent one. I can recommend it, um, although I was a bit put out by a sign on a Sony Music Centre in the 70s saying how our ancestors used to listen to music. But more interestingly is the pub that they built um, next to the folk museum in part of the bill, which is called The Navigation. On the day I was in the museum, I came out, um, miserable day, in urgent need of a toilet, um, and the pub was there, so I dived in uh, to the pub, um, not in the habit of using pub toilets um, without at least paying for something, so I dashed to the bar, got a pint of beer, stupid it on tape, and made for the, to for the end's toilets. Now... When I went in the gents toilet, there was nobody in there, and as I needed to use a stall, there were only two stalls. I went to the one uh, nearest to the wall, um, but then realised I'm looking at it, that there was no toilet paper in that stall. Um, so I then went into the one next to it uh, and sat down, as one does. I was in the middle of doing uh, what I was in there for, when I suddenly became aware of the most tremendous farts coming from the stall next door. Um, real, you know, five curries in a night job. And I was thinking to myself, oh, God, uh, some poor soul has obviously had a bad night. When it suddenly struck me that I hadn't heard anybody come into the toilets, I hadn't seen anybody go past the one I was sitting in, and as usual with gents' toilets, there's a gap between the, 
the bottom of the door on the floor at which I would have seen anybody. And plus, as I was well aware, there was no toilet paper in that stall. So whoever was in there was going to have a real problem. Um, I did what I was, uh, finished what I was doing, flushed, stood up and then glanced at the next stall, which was door which was open. There was nobody in there. I, I checked to make sure um, that it wasn't the water in the toilet making a noise because you can't get that. Although this was definite parts and not the sort of noise one gets from there. But uh, nothing. Uh, unfortunately, it was not smell of vision either. Um, now, if we can have the next slide. You can see on the right, um, the one on the picture on the left is actually the inside of the navigation pub. You can see it was a new new style pub. Uh, the one on the right is actually a picture that was taken after the toilets were vandalised some years back. And um, the one with the door hanging off, that is the actual stall and the actual toilet where the Phantom Farter inhabited it. Um, I don't think his activities has literally blown the door off here. Uh, this was done, unfortunately, by people who vandalised the pub. Um, but when I came out of the gents, I was in a bit of a quandary, because if I'd seen just you know a headless lady or a white lady drift through the wall or something, I would have been quite happy to go up to the counter and say, excuse me, do you, is there a white lady that wants a gents, or you know, is there a headless bloke? But a phantom farter was a bit difficult. Um, so I went to the bar, I spoke to the barmaid, and I thought, I know, I've got these ghost books with me, so I, I put one on the bar, so face up with, and I said, oh, by the way, been reading this, um, is this pub haunted? Hoping she would say, oh, yes, the gents is haunted by uh, some guy who farts in one of the toilets. But she didn't. She looked at me with a withering look and said, don't be stupid, this is a new pub. I sort of explained everything. Um, and I must admit at the time I was a bit too embarrassed to say, well, I've just heard somebody farting in the toilets and there's nobody there. Um, so I drank my beer and, and left. Um, so if you're ever in Newark and you want to see if anybody's still there, um, he may still be hanging around that toilet stall. It may well be that having been repaired, um, if it was the stone tape type of sound ghost, which he certainly was, um, he's no longer there but I invite people to go in and have a look. If we can have the next slide. Now, this one um, is another one from Wakefield. What you're looking at is two views of the former vicarage in Wakefield, uh, known now as the old vicarage. Um, it's actually a, a, an old building. Um, the one on the left, shows a, a white building attached to it which is a later building um, the red brick building in the middle is the old vicarage parts of which actually date back to the 14th century um, but the majority of it dates from around the 17th century um, it was stopped in, in use as a vicarage um, just before the first world war and it was then bought by the local conservative association and for many years it was a Conservative club. And the white building um, to the left of the main one is actually the, the little top window that you, is visible there um, in both pictures. It's actually the window of the former caretaker's flat um, who used to live there and look after the uh, Conservative club. Um, and quite often, the last one told me, she quite often would lock everything up and hear the sounds of um, merriment going on from the bar amongst other things. When there was nobody there, she'd go back again and nobody be there. Now, it was her that told me an interesting story. Um, if you look at the uh, part of the old vicarage that juts out into the car park, uh, in the right-hand picture, you can see uh, the lower one with a sign and a barred window. It's a bit more clearer there. That behind there was the former gents' toilets. One went down a flight of stairs within the building to the gents. Now, the tale I was told by the caretaker um, was that various nice young men, while standing at the urinals in the gents, suddenly felt a hand um, trying to at least assist them with what they were doing or groping their genitalia. Um, and needless to say, nobody was actually there. Now, 
needless to say, this was not a story that the local Conservative Association was at all willing to discuss uh, or even admit that there were any ghosts in the building. Um, it was sold off by them, although they retained the freehold of the building. Um, and as you can see from the two pictures, it's it was been turned into various units, um, and they were leased. I think it, it's been a a range of different units over about the, the last roughly eighteen twenty years now, and it's falling a bit into rack and ruin. The, the picture that you're looking at on the left and the right were taken uh, about five or six years back when it was actually slightly better. It's still being used. A lot of these places have closed down and moved out. Now, having heard about the Phantom Groper, I didn't have a chance to go down when it was, convert, it was converted. Uh, and afterwards, it was used for a while by a tattoo parlour. Not, nothing was particularly reported back to me from then. Um, and I was thinking I'd never actually get a chance to go into the unit because it had been locked up for years. Until later, earlier this year, or last year, as I should say, um, when I found out that two friends of mine have actually rented one of the top units. And in talking to one of them, she informed me that she'd actually, without knowing it, been renting this unit that we're talking about here. And she'd actually been using it um, for her business, which is making um, car, uh, birthday cards, gift cards to order, basically. And she knew nothing of the story uh, until I told her. But she, what she told me was that she'd had poltergeist activity, things being thrown around, and where she had a particular desk in there, she'd felt things touching and moving. Um, and interestingly, she had looked up on one occasion and she'd seen a gentleman, she said he was, it looked to be in his 40s, but flurry faced, in a dinner jacket, uh, standing staring at her um, and not looking particularly friendly. So she still had the keys to the unit, so she invited me to go and have a look at it. Um, Near to say, I jumped at the chance, and we went down and opened up. Now, when I went inside and looked, I realised that where her desk had been was where the urinals used to be. So and she showed me where the ghost had been, which was not quite there. It was a little over towards where... Um, I suspect that the stalls would have been when it was gents. Um, but right where her desk had been was actually where the urinals were formerly there. You could see that where the fittings had been at one stage, where the young gentleman had been groped by the phantom groper. So it was interesting. Um, he's obviously still about, um, but the fact that she was female and from all of her indications, he's mainly interested in young men. Um, meant that she just got poltergeist stuff and she didn't actually get any groping herself. She just got stuff thrown around and a bit touched with no no sexual touching. So it's still in there. Now, her unit is now up to be rented. Um, so if there are any nice young gentlemen out there looking for a good time, it's available. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Now, my next two stories um, are about two interesting hauntings in York. And these are two pubs, neither of which feature on any of the ghost walks in York, and both of which have ghosts of different reasons. This first one that you are looking at um, if you look, you people will have realised that this is actually the same pub. The name on the left-hand um, picture, the Five Lions, is the original name of the pub. It was called the Five Lions for centuries. Um, it's named the Five Lions, incidentally, not after a football or anything like that, otherwise it would be the Three Lions. It's because the Five Lions have actually appear on the coat of arms of the city of York. Uh, so it's a very old symbol in York. Um, and the pub itself, the picture on the left is, is how I knew it when I lived in York in the 70s, or just outside York. And I used to go down Warmgate. Um, this particular pub in those days was a bit of a rough pub. It, it was a, a bit of a football hooligan pub, actually. 
Now, you can see from the pub on name on the right, it was bought in 2015 and the name was changed to the Watergate Inn. And that's how it appears now. Um, and it's now uh, rents out apartments um, and you can actually stop in the pub. The interesting tale about the Five Lions is this. When I was there in the, in the 70s in York, the story was that at the back of the pub itself were where the old stable blocks used to be. Um, and actually, there used to be a cockpit there because it was renowned for cockfighting. Um, just as an inter in incidental, the, the ghost of an old squire is also supposed to haunt it, um, who was uh, involved in the cockfighting and things. But the ghost we're interested in is a female ghost. She's known as Green Jenny. Now, it's rather vague stories. Looking online now, it's very hard to find any stories whatsoever about how the haunting arose. Back in the 70s, the tale that was told was that she'd been murdered in the stables by an ostler, which is somebody who looks after horses. And as a result of that, she haunted the stable block. Now, when they decided to put such things as toilets for gents in, they used the old stable block. So the gents' toilets, back when I was living in New York in the 70s, were at the back of the pub, which, as those gentlemen watching this will know, old-fashioned gents' toilets, that's if you wanted to go, you had to cross the yard usually, and if you were lucky, it was a stable, um, or it was an outside loo. This is where the gents used to be, and people in the gents used to be uh, surprised to see the ghost of a woman in a green dress, hence Green Jenny, um, presumably causing them to do what they were doing a lot faster than they would normally have done. And that was the tale back in the 70s. Now, the current Watergate Inn, the gents' toilets are no longer gents' toilets, like a lot of other pubs, they've got the gents indoors, and that area's been redeveloped, um, and they're actually apartments. If you go to the website of the Watergate Inn, and you look at what the pub says about the haunting, it's interesting, because it claims that the ghost of Green Jenny now haunts an upstairs apartment, a first floor room. I don't know which of the ones on the first floor they, they're claiming she haunts, but that's where they say she now is. So at some stage, either the ghost got fed up of haunting uh, gents' toilets or and or apartments and decided she had better things to do and she'd go and haunt a bedroom instead. Or, as I suspect, because this was an oral tale that was told, um, an oral tale was going to change in the telling. Nobody really knew, just that there's a vague tale of a green jenny, um, and it's been associated, of course, with a barmaid who's supposed to have vaguely either been killed up there by an ostler, which gives a hint to the earlier tale, or presumably hung or killed herself or in a fit of depression in one of the upstairs rooms, um, which is not to say that there may not be another ghost, of course, in the pub of another barmaid um, haunting one of the upstairs rooms and people are getting it wrong, and it's not the same ghost. So again, an interesting tale. Um, the thing with toilet ghosts is that, as in this instance, people forget that toilets were not always, and this is, this applies to your houses as well as the, the fact that these are all pubs in this talk, by and large, is because I wanted to include places that, Hopefully, when the COVID goes past, people might have a chance of visiting themselves and seeing what they could find, as opposed to talking about stories um, in private homes, which uh, you won't get a chance of. Um, but as water closets, or w, which became WECs, were introduced at a later stage, then there were usually outside toilets and indoor toilets, uh, after a while, tended to be... Uh, put into rooms in the older buildings, which would be used as something else, which is why you can find female ghosts haunting the gents' toilets, because the gents' toilet may be put in, um, what was a former female bedroom, or male ghosts haunting the female toilets for the same reason. Um, things move, 
uh, things are added, things are taken away. Uh, as in this instance, the toilets are being moved um, and turned into something else. Now, uh, if we could have the next slide. And this illustrates what I've just been talking about. This is a pub a bit farther down Warm Gate uh, from the Watergate Inn, and it's called the Spread Eagle. Now, the picture on the left shows it in the 1970s when it used to be my local, uh, whenever I went into York from Dunnington, which is where I then lived. This was the pub I went to. Um, you can see slightly better from the picture on the right which shows it as it now is it's a very old fashioned narrow pub um, it originally in the 1970s you went through that door there on that window to the um, to the left the main window below where it says spread eagle take the ales that was the main bar and it would hold if you were lucky about 20-30 people it's a very small pub where the door is on the right, you went down the corridor and there was a very, very small, uh, what they used to call a snook in the old-fashioned days, a very small back bar which held about five or six people. And in order to get to the gents' toilets, you continued down the corridor and you went out through the back door and you went across a bit of a yard to the outside toilets, of which there was a gents out there, and you then went into the old type of urinal, which is just a basic trough, uh, and a couple of stalls if you wanted to sit out there. Now, as I say, it was a very old pub, um, just out of interest, when you can see it says Tech the Ales on the one in the 70s. Uh, it was a failing pub when I first went in it. It was actually bought to be knocked down. Um, by at that time, there's a car showroom that's immediately to the left of the uh, picture on the on the left on the side, and they'd actually bought it to knock it down. Um, so they put a, a landlord in and told him he had a free hand to do whatever he wanted. So he asked if he could turn it into a real ale pub, um, as Tatlis had sold it off, and they said do whatever you want because we're going to knock it down. Um, but they agreed a figure that if it made, I think back in no this was 1970, it was something like three grand a month. Um, then he, you know, they, he got eighty percent. They got twenty percent because he thought he'd never do it. He did it with relay within six months, um, and after that, he was actually making more money than car showrooms, which is why the pub is still there because they couldn't afford to knock it down. Now, as I say, it was my local whenever I went in, and it was a good crowd in there. One Monday, I went in, and they were busily telling me that the previous um, weekend, which would have been the Sunday, the poor pub cleaner had gone out to clean the gents' toilets and she'd found a guy dead in one of the stalls. Um, if I remember rightly, it was nothing, you know, it was nothing violent. Uh, it wasn't a drug overdose or anything like that. The poor guy had had a heart attack uh, and died. And unfortunately, nobody had found him until the cleaner uh, came along in the morning and found this poor guy dead on the toilet, which must have been a shock for her as much as him dying in the toilet was for him. So I knew about the tale. Um, I left York. I moved around quite a lot. And, and I've been living here in Wakefield since 86. Uh, but York's not that far away. I go back whenever I can. And in fact, I've taken people round on ghost tours, uh, knowing hauntings like the previous one I referred to, that you don't see. Um, on the ghost walks and I popped into the Sped Eagle um, partly for old time's sake in 2016 and being an afternoon and it's it became a, it became a music pub it was quite a popular music pub because what they'd done the former Snug which was the bar, bar they extended it outwards <coughs> they knocked down the gents toilets they knocked down the ladies and they extended the pub out and so the back room is actually where they have music and uh, it's quite nice um, if you go there there's a bit of conservatory and stuff like that <coughs> and the toilets were placed within the now within the pub so i was sitting really by myself uh, with the land with the well, I didn't realise it was the landlord at the time. Well, I had a couple of people in the bar. 
uh, and me and the uh, barmaid. So I was explaining to her how it used to be my local. Uh, I'm telling her the story about how it had been saved, etc., etc. Um, when I just said, "Oh, by the way, is this pub haunted?" and she said, "Why?" And I proceeded to tell her the story um, of the guy being found dead in the pub toilet. At which point, the landlord and looked at her, and looked at her. She looked at him, and he said, "That explains it." And I said, "What?" And they said, "Well, various people have seen uh, a male ghost in the back bar. Um, in fact." He, and he showed me a photograph, but it was on his, his mobile phone. He said, this is a photograph that somebody had taken a celebration in which there was a, a black, as usual with these type of figures, it was a male figure, black figure, blurred, that nobody could explain. Um, and he said, various people had had strange things of a, of a male ghost, but they didn't have any story to explain who he might be or what he might be doing there. So he said, you've just told us about a possible explanation as to why there is a ghost haunting the back bar. It might be the guy who died on the toilet. Um, but of course, the toilet's not there now. He's in the back bar in a music pub, um, which is probably better off for that thing. So I've tried looking this one up because I, I just didn't remember being in it happening. Um, I've tried looking a bit through the York papers, but I've not had access to the art, full archive here. Um, so I to see who he might have been. But... I suspect, as it was a, a natural death, um, it wasn't featured in the papers um, at all. Um, it was just a local tale within the pub itself. Um, so if you do go to York, um, and you do go to Warmgate, that's a couple of pubs uh, that people can go in and have a good look around. Can we have the final one, or is that the final one? Right. Um, just to wrap up this story... There are a couple of, of tales um, that I can uh, tell people because, um, as I said earlier, there are ghosts that haunt toilets and there are ghosts that haunt bathrooms all over. Now, <clears throat> the, the picture that most people would have expected me to use in this, and it seems to come to most people's minds when I tell people I collect stories of haunted toilets, is, of course, uh, Bernie Myrtle from the J.K. Rowling um, stories who haunt the toilets at Hogwarts. Um, for obvious reasons, I've not used a picture of her. But that's not entirely dissimilar to a lot of stories uh, that people will remember. Virtually every school, when I've spoken to people, seem to have a story about the toilets, be it the gents' toilets or the ladies' or the girls' toilets being haunted. Um, children being children, of course, uh, tend to make these tales up to scare their classmates, and then they get handed down. Um, but there are quite a few tales of haunted schools. For example, um, I'm not going to name the school where it happened, because the lady happened to ask me not to, but she was um, on duty as a teacher, uh, looking in the girls' toilets and checking nothing was going on. She saw in one of the stalls below the floor a pair of uh, young girls' shoes um, and stuff and ankle shoes. Uh, so she went, thinking, oh, it's been in there a while, went to check out uh, what was going on and uh, nobody was in there. So much to a surprise uh, and shock and she rushed out. Right. <laughs> one other um, type of tale, as, as I said, the, the school toilets seem to be quite a common one that people may have encountered. There are a lot of haunted hospitals um, around the country which people know or are aware of. There, there seem to be quite a lot of uh, virtually every hospital that I've ever spoken to, members of staff to, when you start talking about ghosts, will tell you tales. But interestingly, there's quite a few hospitals which have got uh, haunted sluices and haunted toilets. The sluices is where the staff go to empty stuff and, and wash hands, etc. Um, there's quite a few, though, where they've seen elderly patients going into toilets, have gone in a concern, and lo and behold, there's nobody there. Um, it seems to be rather an occurrence, um, I suspect, 
as Mr. Sackler said to me, that these are unfortunately, you know, people have died in the hospital and don't know where they are, um, and don't, in some instances, don't actually realise that they're dead. Um, in the case of the haunted sluices, there, there's quite a few where they they've seen ex members of staff, um, be it doctors and or nurses, uh, going in, <coughs> going in and going about their business and so. You know, nobody was there. It's the old fashioned clothing that gives them uh, away. But um, coming back to people's houses, of course, um, again, there are hauntings of houses. One that I'm amused may um, happen and may still be happening for all I know um, at the house of a man I went to see is a place called Osage, which is a village just outside Wakefield. Now, the house that he lived in. Um, it's an old-fashioned terraced house. Um, it has got an indoor toilet. But he told me, um, in the course of us discussing various sightings that happened to him and ghosts, that he was really annoyed because what he had was a ghostly female figure that he used to see in, in like a white nightdress, and it used to go down uh, the corridor and into the toilet. And... When he would wake up in need of the toilet himself uh, and sort of half awake, so he'd see this figure go down the corridor. And it was like a stone tape figure because he said he always did the same actions. It didn't interact with him. But because he thought it was his wife, um, he would be laid there waiting to use the toilet and, and quite desperate. And it was then, only when he came fully awake, that he'd suddenly become aware of the fact that actually his wife was in bed with him. At which point he'd realise it was the ghost again. And he, he said to me at the time, you know, I wish you'd go somewhere else or, or carry on because uh, he said, I've not wet myself yet, but, you know, you never know. Um, but he, he, you know, I said, well, why don't you get it exercised or something like that? He said, no, I'm quite used to it now. I just wish she'd take a different route, uh, which I thought was quite accommodating of him, really. Um, if it was me in that situation, I think I would have... Uh, tried to get rid of it in some uh, ways at least so I could use the toilet now as I say there are also haunted bathrooms which I've not really touched on here um, but there are quite a few uh, cases where people have been in the bath or getting undressed uh, and suddenly realised that they're not alone in the bathroom um, be it a male figure looking on females or a female figure looking on males or and in fact there are reports of females looking at females and males looking at males um, and things moving around in bathrooms is quite a common one as well um, usually for some reason the medicine cabinet that people seem to um, sort of poltergeist effects doors open, things fall off um, stuff like that so as I say next time you're in the bathroom or next time you're in the toilet just be careful because you might not be on your own and that's the end of the story. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve. Very different and entertaining talk there. It may well have brought out a few tales from people who've been watching, and if anyone does have any tales of a fortune nature that's taken place in the toilet, please feel free to leave the details below in the chats and comments section, or please feel free to contact us using any of the uh, methods that are detailed in the description for this talk. Our next talk is Tuesday, the 2nd Tuesday of February, which is the 9th of February, and that will go live on that date at 7.30pm. I hope to see you all there. Thank you very much, folks. Bye for now.